was the message about the ready to eat food that is actually distributed uh, for both lactating women, pregnant women, and also children between six months to three years old. So the uh, what we did was the uh, fact of uh, one idea is that uh, you know we, when we started actually doing this experiment, our uh, portion tracker is also showing some significant improvement in terms of uh, the outcome. We also wanted to check, you know, before the NFHS 6 comes, what is the kind of a status that uh, you know, in terms of nutritional outcome. So we have that, we are actually currently there is a study going on. So where we are also trying to collect the data about whether the, the, the people are liking the food that is being provided. Right. We are getting very interesting data coming up. So it's a, they, there is a, in fact, again, uh, we say, Fortification is good, but uh, they are not like it. So, on one way, it's like you know, explain something about the benefits of fortification and start actually doing it. The other way is okay, whether there are any mechanisms what actually might be you know, there. So, how much the decentralization can happen, some of those. We are trying to uh, you know, put another focus on that. But, so I, uh, so that's like briefly about the fortification and you know, that. but actually, if you look at the kind of a for providing eggs also every day. So it is possible because they are decentralized. They are using self help groups to make the food and you know, dump and chat and they complete the responsibility. What I just wanted to share here is that often actually the, the state has, you know, delegated, like that's why I use the plural term, like you know, everyone is delegating to somebody else. Today the health work has been delegated to an untried health worker. It's not an AM is a trained two year program. Earlier AM used to go and visit the villages, take care of the now AM. So that's why we innovation also the outcomes are not heavier. What I wanted to hear the point is that we have to see the purpose. The purpose is to save lives. Purpose is to improve the nutrition outcome. I think we need to work more on that. Rest of the things actually we can work on backwards. Like that way maybe can we keep them there? So but to do that you require a lot of change, you know, require, I would say, to do that experimentation, you require to create a kind of holding environment, you require to create a space within the government to make those experiments. It requires, you know, make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a lot of experimentation. I, I want to the fortification thing, I mean, so that can, like, you can talk later. I think the space for experimentation is being created, but it has to be hidden. Yeah. For, for yeah. obvious purposes. Yeah. So there are a lot of really neat experiment startup being going on in terms of nutrition itself, but also otherwise in terms of service delivery, in terms of uh, sort of tap. just by eating chuda or chikki, how oh, they are not. So it's not really that much. Second thing, integrate for any, like malnutrition is the worst in tribal areas. Like 10% of the Indian population and 20% of the Myanmar states. So 30% of the people in the Indian population, they are suffering from such problems. In such area, integrated approach is the only solution. Like as I told, the community-based management of severe malnutrition, treatment of infections. Community participation is very important. Intensive health education programs, nutrition guidance, kitchen guidance, employment generation, then uh, working for the rights of people, nutrition and health rights of people. And uh, in that, I want to highlight one special point is that intensive behavior change communication can play the most important role. It's not just in uh, giving a lecture, you have to demonstrate like how to cut the nails, how to wash the hands, how to grow the food, how to prepare nutritious dishes. And that is the key for all these achieving very good uh, recovery rate of severe malnutrition. So, yeah. One little thought I forgot. I think it is also equally important that from the fortification uh, rigor, uh, the role that big food plays. And uh, the there is a history, for example, of companies trying to convince us that infant formula is as good as breast milk. Contrary to every single piece of evidence for 50 years. So let's not forget that. Where the fortification drive is coming from. Because nobody makes a profit when you eat carrots. Yeah, I think that that was the elephant in the room that yes. we had not.
the commercial determinants of health and nutrition are equally important to discuss. Uh, as moderator, I have the last word and I'm going to take it very briefly. Fortification, if you ask a question, then you might know that I've done substantial work on it and maybe we can have a conversation later. Mostly to suggest that we should be using alternatives. It's not that there's something drastically per se wrong with fortification, but really you should be doing other things. Now that brings me to the point that I think Ashwin is making, which is very important, that we, we may have differences in terms of nuances and there are contextual differences. You and I will have different views on SUW uh, and some other things. But what I want to say is, that the basics of food and nutrition are the same, the same, the same, and they're commonsensical, and there is full consensus on that, which is that everybody should get decent food, not just plate for naked cereal, not just rice, which is what most people are eating, decent food, meaning food with variety, with taste, with choice, with what they like, what they don't like, in all our programs, meaning in the Anandwadi, in the midday meal, in the school meal, why is it that we're thinking that somebody prescribes one thing and that everybody has to take forever? Why would any child want to eat the same food again and again, even if it is RDPF? The whole day will the child keep eating the same food? Every day, every day, every day. Don't we all know that we all deserve and need decent food? So there is no lack of consensus. There is no debate on this. Now the question has truly enriched our understanding of not only the challenges, but also the opportunities in this vital domain. We are grateful for your time and expertise. I would like to request Professor Ashwini Chhatre to kindly felicitate the panelists with a token of appreciation. Mr. Sampath Kumar, can you please have a round of applause? <laughs> Dr. Ashish Katab. <laughs> Dr. Vandana Prasad. As we progress to the subsequent section of the public policy dialogue, I'm delighted to announce the second panel on the sub theme of climate action and justice. The session shall explore the need and urgency to achieve environmental sustainability together with equity in social impacts to various sections of the society. It shall also address the injustice met to vulnerable communities who are at the forefront of climate change impacts. Our esteemed panelists will share their wealth of knowledge and experience to provide responsible and inclusive pathways towards awareness and action in the domain of climate action, action and justice. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to our distinguished panelists on the stage. Ms. Marcela D'Souza, Director of the Watershed Organization Trust, that is the WOTR Center for Resilient Study. Please give a huge round of applause. Next we have Mr. Richard Mahapatra, Managing Editor of Down to Earth Ma Magazine. Next we have Professor Purnamita Das Gupta, Chair in Environmental Economics and Head of the Environmental and Resource Economics Unit, Institute of Economic Growth. She is also the co-lead negotiator for India Delegation at IPCC. Please extend a warm welcome to the moderator of this discussion, Professor Anjal Prakash, Research Director and Adjunct Associate Professor at the Bharti Institute of Public Policy, Indian School of Business. Can I please have a huge round of applause for all our panelists? <laughs> 
Space for interacting with the uh, uh, crowd here, so that will be good. Uh, in the panel today, that you know, uh, if you see uh, the background of this panel, we have a eminent uh, personality, uh, all working on climate change and action. Um, uh, we have Punamita Das Gupta. She is a science policy, you know, uh, uh, works on science policy, section of science and policy, and also an academician. So we have an academician sitting here. Then we have Marcela. She is a practitioner. She works on ground with communities. And we have a journalist, uh, an eminent journalist. Um, Richard has been working with Outworld for uh, almost two decades, uh, and um, and uh, also reporting on issues of climate change. So uh, we will uh, start the session now. Uh, this session's focus is actually on climate action and justice. Now, if you look at the entire issue, gamut of climate action justice, you find that uh, the issues are, uh, you know, uh, it, it depends on how you understand these issues, where you are. So, if you're talking, you're talking about it at a